This video and all content on this channel is performed by a pest control professional and it is always recommended to hire a pest control pro in your area to perform any pest control in or outside your home. Pesticides can harm you and your loved ones. Anyone who is performing the information in this video is doing so at their own risk. If you decide to try the info provided in this video, please always check with the local laws in your area and read the labels of any product you use. The label is the law. Control. Uh, why would there be another infestation of bed bugs within 30 days after using Crossfire? You wouldn't have another infestation of bed bugs within 30 days after using Crossfire. You probably still have the same infestation. All right, so you've got to understand a bed bug's life cycle. If you've got a, a timeline, all right, let's 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 draw a timeline here. We're going to do this. All right, that's a really crappy line, but let's say that's our timeline. All right, you spray Crossfire here, all right? Crossfire, all right? CX for Crossfire. That's what we're going to say. All right, your bed bug, all right, let's, let's go with the life cycle of a bed bug. So... Let's say your bed bug, your bed bug's over here. He's like, hey, man, I'm a bed bug. I'm pretty cool, all right? Because they're insects. Let's give them six legs. All right, so there's the bed bug. Now, they're over here. This is before you spray crossfire. Let's, let's extend our timeline this way. All right, so that bed bug has laid eggs. So he's got boop, boop, boop. Oh, look. Oh, my babies. I'm going to have me some babies. But then you cross, you, you, you apply your crossfire. Now, this bed bug is dead, all right? The eggs aren't dead, but the bed bug's dead, all right? So the eggs takes seven days. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now seven to ten days, eight, nine, ten. All right, so there's ten days, number ten. All right, these eggs are hatching right now. You, you apply crossfire day one. All right, this is all the way up to day 10. These bed bugs are just now hatching right here. All right, now bed bugs don't hatch hungry. They wait another six to 10 days to come out to bite. So let's go another one, two, three, four, five, six, maximum 10, seven, eight, nine, 10. And there's day 20. All right, now, it's been 20 days since you applied Crossfire the first time, all right? These bed bugs have finally decided they're going to come out, they're going to get a blood meal, and now all these little eggs that hatch, now they are dead, okay, because they're crawling out. But you might have had some crawl out over here that died, you might have had a couple crawl out over here that died, all right, so, and not only that, Bed bugs don't need to feed every day. So let's say a bed bug crawled out like right here, all right? Now that one is dead, okay? He crawled out, crossfire is still effective. Okay, so crossfire is effective for 30 days. So then these bed bugs, as they, they, they hatch out from eggs, they've started to crawl out looking for a host. Now they're coming into contact with the chemical. So you figure at least three weeks, because 21 days, 21 days, that's three weeks, All right, that's a long time. That's a long time from the original treatment of Crossfire right here. That's why a lot of people will actually treat with Crossfire, wait two weeks, which is right around here, and they'll treat again with Crossfire because they want a stronger concentration. So what happens is if this goes all the way to day 30, and by then you're having to reapply Crossfire again, this period in here is when Crossfire is at its weakest concentration. It's that last 10 days. It will still kill bed bugs, but it doesn't kill them very quickly. They're able to come out. They're able to bite you. They're able to make you miserable again before they die. And so the, the general consensus is treat once around day one, treat again around two weeks from now, and then that way you've got a full strength to last you all the way through day 30, even into day 40 and 50. But... The thing is, is that really this whole span, the bed bugs can die from day one all the way to day 30. So when people say that, uh, you know, how can they get reinfested within 30 days, more than likely they still have this original infestation right here. Because I tell people you're not really rid of an infestation until you've been 30 days without anything. 
you know, because the bed bugs do slowly filter out. They don't need a blood meal. If the customer has gone in and sprayed, let's say they, let's say we're at like day negative 10, all right? That's 10 days before the treatment. And they treated with like ta towel stock, because that's a popular one, right? All right, the problem with Talstar, and you can't really see this whole picture, but the problem with Talstar at negative day 10, Talstar has a 90-day residue. It is a repellent, okay? Crossfire is a non-repellent. So if they've applied Talstar, you know, a, two weeks before you applied your Crossfire, this Talstar is still in effect this entire time. And you may have some bed bugs come out and crawl in the chemical, but most of them won't. And if they're doing their own pest control with repellent pesticides like you buy at Walmart, then you're going to have this problem where the crossfire is probably not going to work. Not to the extent that I try to explain to people it does work, because they've applied something that causes problems early on. So you want to try... I usually tell people... I actually have people message me and they ask me, you know, I just sprayed with this stuff before I saw your video or whatever, how well, how often should I, do? How, how soon should I wait to spray Crossfire? And I usually tell people, give it 30 days. Give it at least 30 days from the time you sprayed a pesticide from the store. Give it at least 30 days. That way, you know that most of the residue from this chemical right here, whatever it was, is pretty much gone. You can apply your Crossfire after that, which would mean you treat here, right here. And if you treat with Crossfire here, after somebody has sprayed, you know, a month and a half ago, hopefully you'll be able to eliminate the bed bugs within this time frame over here. So hopefully that answered your question about, you know, about Crossfire and bed bug infestations and how the pesticide actually works. Um, I had a guy come in from a bed pest control company in my state. He immediately went to talking about heat treatments. Yes, that's what they do. We got a bottle of Crossfire, and I'm going to try that before we spend $2,400. Um, that's fantastic. It, it'll work really well. Uh, make sure you, you take all the sheets off your bed, treat your mattress, treat your box spring. Hello, wife. If they're doing it themselves, they might as well do three months of treatment because that's really what we recommend to everyone. That's what I, I agree. I agree. Alicia came in right at the right time. Um, if you're going to do your own treatment, so... I can. I have gotten rid of bed bugs with one treatment. It's it. It happens a lot. It it happens frequently. Uh, it happens more often than, than not. having to retreat. But retreatment does happen, even with a professional. And so I from from twenty five years, twenty three. Well, seventeen years ago, twenty three years. All right. So twenty three years ago is when I did my first bed bug job. I've always done ninety day treatments. I've always done a one treatment every ninety days. I mean every thirty days. Once a, once a month for thirty days, three treatments. I recommend that people that do it themselves keep a bottle on hand and retreat. You know, retreat once a month, and that way you uh, ensure that you've got a whole ninety day. Because like I said, if you're doing this, where you've tried to do all kinds of stuff and you've got these different chemicals you've applied. You may actually need a thirty, a, a ninety-day treatment plan, even if you do it on your own. That's what I still recommend. I don't do them very few. I mean, when people realize that I'm willing to, you know, finance it out and do a one-month treatment rather than doing ninety days worth of treatments, most people go for the one month, and then if they need me, they could just call me back. So, but that's still what I recommend to do if you're, you know, a do-it-yourselfer because you're, you're not, you don't have 23 years of experience. You're, you're doing it on your own trying to get rid of this problem and you will get rid of them, but you know, you need to be diligent. You need to treat once a month. What I tell people to do is set a day. Like today is the first uh, Thursday of the month. So on the first Thursday of the month, treat your house with Crossfire for two or three visits. And then usually you'll get rid of your bed bugs on your own, no problem. But I've had people do it one time. I've had people do it one time, but I still recommend once a month. So I use DE, and I think I isolated them and forced them to climb. Yep, that is right. So best nail tech ever, which I, I need my nails done, girl. Um, I She says, I used DE. I think I isolated them and force them to climb, which happens all the time with diatomaceous earth because they don't like to crawl through it, and now they're falling from the ceiling. This happens. 
when the bed bugs try to crawl across the ceiling, and they do, they don't have sticky pads on their feet like a spider or a cockroach or earwig or other type of bug. And so it's common for them to try to crawl across the ceiling and then fall off. They're not parachuting down. They're not doing it on purpose. They're just slipping and falling. And of course, they can just flitter down to the bed and then they're there and they'll bite you. This happens. It does happen. I used Crossfire about three weeks ago and I'm getting bit still. Is that normal? Yes. So I actually went through the, the, the timeline. I'll go through it one more time here. So I drew this earlier for people that were watching. And so let me explain to you what this means. So when you treat with Crossfire right here, this is the original Crossfire treatment. Um, there's bed bugs that lay eggs. All right, that bed bug dies when you spray Crossfire because it's alive. All right, the eggs are hidden away, tucked away somewhere that the spray can't get to them. But in ten days, right here, they hatch. And then in tw in uh, uh, twenty days, right here, these bugs that were laid, you know, almost three weeks ago, they come out to get a bite. And then when they do, they die. But the problem is, is the crossfire is at its strongest concentration when it's applied. And it kills the bugs the quickest right here at this point. It's still going to kill them over here at this spot. It's still going to kill them here. But the problem is, is that it's taking them longer to die here because the chemical is not as strong. They will still die, so be patient. And if you get to right here at the 30-day mark and you're still getting bit, that's when I would probably reapply the crossfire and do a second treatment. You might not have got them all. So that's what I recommend. Why do you think bed bugs are so difficult? Is it because, as you said, they hide and lay their eggs? Yes. So one of the reasons bed bugs are so difficult is because people continue to bring them into their house. Um, this is the reason. I believe this is the number one reason is that people continue to bring them into their house. Let me show you. So, let's say this is your house. Let's see, let's see, where's my, where's my point? Okay, let's get this one, let's do this, let's do this. Okay, so you are here. And this is like a Dr. Seuss house, I guess. You live in a Dr. Seuss house. Okay, so there's your house. You live here. You have bed bugs. Let's say you drive a car. All right, there's your car. Cool car. Looks like a Tesla. All right, you drive a Tesla. Okay, so the car's plugged in. There we go. Now, you have bed bugs, but you don't realize you have bed bugs. So, because they're not bad yet, they're not really bad. You have very mild infestation. You haven't even noticed maybe even bites. You might have had one bite, two bites, but not enough to really make you think that, hey, I might have bed bugs. So you have eggs on your shoes. You take the shoes into your car because you got to go to work. So then you take your car and you go to work. All right, now you're at work. All right, let's say you work in a big building like this, maybe like, a, like I don't know, Homer Simpson power plant. Let's do the power plant like that. There you go. All right. You work here. Okay. Now you got an office job. You go in here, you infest bed bugs here. Okay. There's work. Now you possibly have taken bed bugs to work. Okay. Then you realize, oh crap, I got bed bugs. You kill them in your house. They're done. They're gone. But you don't treat your car. You maybe infested your workspace. Maybe not. Probably not. Most likely they're just in the car. You should treat your car. When you treat your house, treat your car. Let's say your kids ride the school bus. They have a school bus. All right? This is a school bus. As you can tell, Miss Frizzle would totally ride that. All right? There's a school bus. And it's going to the school over here. All right? S-C-H-O-O-L. All right, there's your school. So the kids bringing bed bugs in from the school bus. That's how you got them. That's how you got bed bugs. You got bed bugs because someone else's child rode the school bus and brought bed bugs and infested the school bus. All right? Your kid rode the bus and brought bed bugs home. You thought you might have brought bed bugs home from work. But it was your child that brought them from the bus. 
Okay? Now, you don't realize that. Kill the bed bugs in your house, they're gone. They've been dead maybe two months. You get bed bugs again. Still school year. Kids still bringing the bed bugs in from the bus. You don't realize that's where they're from. So now, you're driving yourself crazy trying to figure out where the heck did the bed bugs come from? Well, they're coming from this right here. All right, the school and the school bus, back and forth. This is really common. Your neighborhood, your child, is not the only person that rides that bus. There are hundreds of children that ride that bus. They might not even be on the same route. Here, they use the same buses to bus from what happens is the bus comes, picks up elementary school kids, middle school kids, high school kids, takes them to all three different schools. You may be dealing with a bed bug infestation that's from a different area of your city that's coming on the same bus that your children drive, rides on that came from a different part of town because somebody else's child rode on it to get to high school or to get to middle school or whatever. Let's say you got a third grader and he's brought them home, but you got a 10th grader that's riding that bus to get back and forth to high school. You know, that's the thing. You can get them from the school bus. It's very, very common to get them from the school bus. So, that's why I'm saying, if you think you're reinfesting your house, you may not, you may be, you should treat your house, one, let's say let's do this one, treat your house, treat your car, okay, drive your kids to school, don't use a school bus, school bus is a bad idea, school bus is very common to bring bed bugs home on a school bus, um, don't use the car. Don't use a school bus. Just take your kids to school. If you can carpool with somebody and let somebody else take your kids, do that. But don't use a school bus. The school bus is not a good idea. They're very common places for bed bugs. Public transit is a really common place for bed bugs. Carpooling. You can get them from a friend or family member. I actually had a guy one time who was in his truck. He was taking his friend back and forth to work. They worked in construction. And so they would carpool to work. And his friend had bed bugs. He infested his truck with bed bugs. The man brought the bed bugs into his house. So from his friend to his truck to his house. And all he was doing was trying to be nice, take his friend to work, give him a ride to work. And that's how he ended up infesting his own house with bed bugs. So these are different ways you can actually get bed bugs into your house. If it's not just hotels anymore, the most common way that people used to bring bed bugs into their home were from hotels. Now it's friends and family. And places you frequent. I had a lady that they'd had them. I did out actually out in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia. She brought them in from uh, from a local movie theater. So you can bring them literally from anywhere. So what if you got them from work? Should you quit? So I actually did do a video on work. So if you got them from work, let's say you get them from ag your actual place of work. Let's say you don't work in an office or a factory. Let's say you work as a home in care person and you're taking care of an elderly lady. Maybe she has Alzheimer's, maybe she's invalid, maybe she can't take care of herself. So you're there to help with the family take care of this person. And they have bed bugs. Well, you can't just quit your job. It's the way you feed your family. So what you do is you preventatively treat your stuff. You treat your house, you treat your car, you treat these things anyway, even if you don't have bed bugs here, because if you were to bring bed bugs from here to here, they will die when they get here because there's a residual there to kill them. And you don't have to use Crossfire. You can use Alpine as a preventative pesticide. And if you end up getting bed bugs, then use Crossfire. But most of the time, in fact, every time, every single time I've ever done a customer's house as preventative, just regular preventative pest control, for ants and cockroaches, silverfish, stuff like that. The bed bugs come in. They don't live. They die before they get infested. And so it helps a lot with that problem. Now with flea, you know, Alpine is cheaper than Crossfire. Alpine, by volume, you know, because you figure if you buy, even if you buy the whole canister, if you buy a whole canister, 500 grams of Alpine, that's 170 bucks, okay? One bottle of Crossfire is between... 30 and, 40, uh, 30 and 50 bucks for a bottle of Crossfire for one gallon. 500 grams. The max labeled use of, of Alpine, depending on what you're trying to kill, is from 10 grams 
to 30 grams. So you're getting a lot more chemical for your money if you buy Alpine, and Alpine is a good preventative pesticide. It's a very good preventative pesticide.